All right, so this video is a request, a response to request about how I personally trade. And you're going to find that if you look at my stuff online, you're going to see a lot of contradictions. For example, you, you just type in Damon Vario. You'll find my site. You'll find Seeking Alpha. You'll find my YouTube videos. And I teach something different in each place. That's because there, there's two businesses to what I do. One is trading and one is teaching trading. And there's a demand for all different sorts of trading. So in this video, I'm just going to drill down to what I personally trade and why I trade it. And then you'll get a, a pretty good understanding of where I have expertise. And uh, you'll see how it carries over to things like Seeking Alpha, where I talk about investing as well. So I'm going to show you what I consider to be the three T's of trading. I just made this up right now. And they are time, type, and tool. So if you type in how to start trading, you'll probably come across Investopedia. And they'll tell you that there's there's position trading, swing trading, day trading, and scalp trading. All right? Now, scalp trading is probably out of the possibility for most people, for most retail traders, because it takes, uh, it takes high uh, frequency trades. So you're going to need algorithms. You're going to need a close connection to the New York stock market if you want to do it correctly. But everybody has access to day trading, swing trading, and position trading. And I like the way they describe it, day only for day trading. Uh, days to weeks for swing trading and months to years for position trading. Then of course you have invest me, investing, in which case you're probably going to be holding something for more than a year. Now, I generally am going to be doing day trading and swing trading. Once in a while, I'll do a position trade. Once in a while, I'll hold something for a couple months. Now, you'll see later when I talk about the types, why that's a rarity, but why I do it. So in terms of time, I do day trades. I'll write it down here. I do day trades and I do swing trades. My day trades usually are within a day. Within the day. And I don't actually day trade like you probably think. I don't watch the market uh, during the day and then buy and sell at certain times of the day. When I do within the day day trading, I strictly buy at open and sell at close. And the reason I do this is because I uh, trust candlesticks. I've looked at the statistics on many candlestick patterns. And I trust that if we have a decent candlestick pattern that tells us the probability of what's going to happen the next day, I would just trust that candlestick pattern and open it at the next day. So let's take a look at an example. Um, so here, well, I don't like I don't like any of these candlestick patterns. Let's just choose let's choose something popular. Let's choose a spy. Now the spy has a gap. So that's completely different. But let's look at the actually this is a pretty good example here. So if I were to trade the spy as a day trade, if I was looking into day trading, I would look at this two candlestick pattern. You got a big green one and then a little green one up top. That's called a deliberation candlestick pattern. And generally what that means is the next day is going to be up. So I would buy at the open on the next day and sell at the close on the next day. And that would be my day trade. And I would have profited in this case. Now, that's one type of day trade I do. Another type is, um, I guess I would say between the day. Buy at close, sell at open. And what I'm doing is, sometimes I sell at close as well. What I'm doing is, is I'm expecting to be there to be a gap like this. So in this case, I might be watching during the day, the SPY, and I see near the end of the trading day that this candlestick is going to be a deliberation pattern. It's going to be part of a deliberation pattern. And maybe 30 minutes before the market closes, I buy the SPY because I believe the next day it's going to gap up. And in that case, I'd be right. And I would either hold or sell on that day. So those are my two day trade types. Now, for day trades, these make about one fifth of my total trades. And what I usually do, I'll tell you in a second about seasonality, but what I usually do is I have many swing trades. So clearly, swing trades are about four fifths of my trades. 
And what I usually do is I have swing trades that are with the season of the market. So I might find that my portfolio is mostly bearish. I have mostly um, short positions. And in that case, I will use day trades almost like a hedge. I'll day trade in the opposite direction. So that um, if these go down, this goes up. And if this goes up, or th if these go up, and this goes down, I'm not really out that much. It's called hedging. And I'm generally going to be looking for uh, stocks that move in the direction of my overall exposure. So if I'm mostly bullish in my portfolio, I'm going to look for bearish day trades. Now, how do I find those types of trades? Well, like I said, time is divided into day trades and swing trades. And I have about five types of trades that I make. So I'm going to categorize them as algorithm trades. So I'm going to number them. Algorithm trades, um, day trades, that's based on candlesticks, just like you saw. Then I have earnings trades, and then I have seasonality trades, and then I have other. We'll just call it other. All right. So let's go through each of these. My algorithm trades are based on a gap trading algorithm that I created. Now, if you've seen the gap game plan, uh, you'll know that we trade gaps after the gap has already occurred and we watch the candlesticks for a few days. So, uh, for example, if we see a gap here, we wouldn't trade on this day, we would wait. We'd wait a few days, like here, we waited for two days and then we shorted the stock. And we hit our goal, and then we waited for the bounce back and sell, sold. So that's a gap game plan kind of trade. And I'd put that under the other. I don't do a lot of those these days because I don't like waiting. If I see the gap, I want to trade right away. So what I did was I built an algorithm. I, did, I programmed an algorithm that would allow me to determine whether a trade on a gap day is good and how long to trade for. Um, so I have a series of algorithms that I run within a program. So here's one on the Dow Jones. I already plugged this in because there's a gap on the Dow, Dow Jones. Uh, let me find it. Dow Jones index had a gap. Um, I believe it, it has a gap today, or am I mistaken? Maybe that's not a gap. So maybe I'm running this on something that doesn't need to be run on. So let's look for a gap. Here's, here's basically how I do it. I look for a gap. If you took the gap game plan course, you'll see where I find my gaps. Basically, I find them here. I look for a gap with high price and high volume. And then I plug it into my algorithm. So let's just play with SNDK. Why not? Why don't we do Amazon? Amazon has a gap. Um, I actually don't like this gap because it's too big. We're going to do SNDK. Those are up gaps. By the way, we've got up gaps and down gaps. I generally like to trade area gaps. I don't make that choice, the algorithm makes the choice for me. Nokia, that's a stock I like, but it's trading at too low of a price. So we're going to go ahead, we're, we're going to just choose Amazon, because it's the mo most expensive. So we're going to take a look at Amazon, and there's a couple parameters that I use to determine which of the algorithms I have. So we've got a double green candlestick right here, that's two up greens. My guess is that this is going to be a good short opportunity, at least for the short term. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the up gaps, short candlesticks. I'm going to run it on Amazon. And these are two white candlesticks. So we're going to just try this and run it and see how it works. Now what I do for these types of trades is I dig through a bunch of stocks with gaps until I find one that's profitable. Now clearly, this one is going in the opposite direction. So instead of going long, I believe, instead of going short, we want to go long on Amazon. And this would be a profitable trade because it's telling us that we're going to make roughly 120% ROI on this type of trade if we hold for four days um, annually. And our max, well, we can't see the drawdown that way. Um, but if I were to run this on the long side of the algorithm, you'd see that 60 or 57% of the time, this trade is correct, 
and it tells you how much you can expect to earn. So what I would do after that is I would choose to go long on Amazon and I'd go long via a certain tool. Now there are many tools you can use. Most people use stocks. I use options and only options these days, except for some other trades. So I'll give you a list of the others. Sometimes I'll, I'll buy a penny stock. Uh, sometimes I'll make an investment, not an investment, but I'll, I'll run a fundamental trade, no technical analysis whatsoever. Uh, sometimes, what else, gap game plan, all that other stuff. If I see a good opportunity, I take it. I am not rigid. Uh, I would rather have a variety of types of trades so that I could trade in every market. Now my tool is options, only options, because I believe options are superior to stock and I've already made a video on that. You can check it out. Why um, options are superior to stock. And we have so many different option strategies that choosing the right options tool is its going to take too long to explain that. I'm working on a course, so if you're interested in that, you can sign up for the course later. But I'm not going to touch on that in the video. Just know that I've said before, and I'm going to say it many times in the future, the only reason you ever want to buy stock is if you want dividends. Otherwise, options are superior in every way. And on that note, you might ask, well, why don't you buy dividend stocks? Well, first of all, I don't hold long enough. I don't hold long enough to get those dividends usually. And second, dividend stocks tend to underperform the market. Tend to, not always, but tend to. So that's why I don't hold stocks. I only play options. So for example, on this algorithm trade, I find that the algorithm gives a trading signal. And by the way, um, I'm going to be starting to sell these trading signals as a standalone service. But right now in my Copy My Trades service, if you go to DamonVero.com, just my name.com, there's a Copy My Trades program. You can sign up and every day I'll send you out one of the trades I'm making. Many days I make multiple trades, but I'll send you out one of these five that I'm making. Usually I'll send you out the most simple, the simplest one of these five trades um, and tell you how I'm trading it, which options I'm trading it on. So what I do with the algorithms is I look for a signal. I dig through all those gaps. I look for a signal. If I find a signal, usually I'll find one per day. If I find a signal, I'll open a certain option strategy on it. Now, day trades, I already talked about those. I look for a candlestick pattern on a stock that is highly priced. I don't play these Nokia stocks because it's going to cost way too many commissions to buy lots of options contracts. I'd rather buy one expensive options contract on Amazon and play that one contract then have to buy a hundred on iTub, right? So those are the day trades. And again, the day trades are for the sake of moving um, based on the statistics of a certain candlestick pattern. Now, earnings trades. I have an earnings newsletter where we look at um, where we look at a stock that's about to report or earnings. I do a in-depth analysis on that stock and how the earnings will go. If I find a stock that is going to beat on earnings or not beat on earnings, in other words, it's going to have a positive or negative earnings surprise, if that happens, I uh, write an article on it, I let my members see it, and I recommend a trade on that. That's in the Seeking Alpha marketplace. You could just go to the marketplace and check out my earnings newsletter and uh, every week I'll give you an earnings play. These typically are the most profitable of all my plays, uh, except for maybe day trading in terms of time, because on day trades, you do it every day. On earnings, you don't have a good earnings report every day. Now, these are the most pro profitable because they jump so high. For example, last time on Amazon, I made 100% ROI in one day because we correctly predicted that they would beat on earnings and the stock would follow. Now the problem with earnings trades, if you want to do it yourself, there's a video where I talk about how to predict earnings. You can do it yourself, but the problem is you also need to make sure that the stock moves in the same direction as earnings. Many stocks might beat on earnings, but they move in the opposite direction. Uh, there are many reasons for that. So you got to be sure that not only can you predict the earnings correctly, but you could also predict the direction that the stock will move if you do predict the earnings correctly. Now, earnings trades are great because they're usually the only, they're really the only way to get exposure to gaps like this. By predicting earnings correctly, you can actually predict the gaps and the directions of the gaps. And for Amazon, for example, 
Here's why we made double our investment. It went up $60. It went up $60, and with a single options trade, which was, uh, by the way, limited profit and limited risk, if I did unlimited profit, which I probably should have done in retrospect, I should have done unlimited profit, um, I would have made a lot more. Probably would have made six thousand dollars. Instead, I only made, um, I think, I only, I, I think I only put in five hundred dollars and made a thousand dollars. So, for these earnings trades, I don't usually put in a lot of money because there's a lot of speculation and there's something called guidance that comes out with earnings. If earnings is good but guidance is bad, the stock can move in the opposite direction. So earnings trades could, are very high risk, um, high reward earning strategies, but with the right option strategies, you can actually profit even if you're in the wrong direction. That's how I profited on Microsoft. I, I um, predicted that Microsoft would beat on earnings, and they did. So my prediction was correct. And I played an option strategy that would, because I was worried that guidance would be uh, poor, and it was, and that's why Microsoft gapped down instead of gapped up. But by creating the correct option strategy, I actually profited on this trade. And I believe I opened the trade for almost zero dollars. The way the options trade is structured, you can actually open an options trade for free. And I did that, I opened it for zero dollars, and I came out um, with a profit of seventy-five dollars. So. Uh, that's the advantage of using options instead of just buying stock directly on your uh, earnings prediction. So realizing that the three T's of trading mesh together in a way is the key to a successful trading strategy. Options on earnings is great. Options on day trades are also great because if you day trade options, uh, you don't need that much money. Most options uh, day traders need uh, tens of thousands of dollars in their account to be safe. With options, you probably only need a few thousand dollars to make the same profit as day traders who are day who are day trading stock. All right, so um, there are disadvantages of options on day trading, by the way, because you can't. Well, actually, it's not a huge disadvantage, but not not all stocks trade options, and some stocks don't have very liquid options. So, if you're going to day trade options you've got to do it on very liquid stocks, the popular stocks, the popular ETFs like the SPY, uh, popular stocks like Apple. Now, we talked about those three. Let's talk about seasonality. Most of my trades are made in the direction of the market. So I generally, any day of the week, I know which way the market's headed uh, because we have all that historical data. I'm going to trade almost every time in the direction of the market. Now, because I have swing trades that might last a month, I believe that the market's going to trend downward for the month, for example, but it's going to trend upward for the day. So that's where this swing trading, hedging with day trading comes into play. Now, my seasonality trades, I often run them. I often run a uh, seasonality code first. So I'll show you an example here. Uh, here's one on, well, let's do Amazon since we looked at that. Yeah, uh, let's do something different. Let's do let's do Facebook. So this will show us the seasonality of Facebook and how it does each month. Now, if I'm going to make a trade on Facebook, and I believe that we have some candlestick signals that say that we should go long on Facebook, uh, I'm going to probably not do it in the months of May, March, or February, where we have average drops. But I certainly will do it in in June or September or January when the market is going with us. In addition to the seasonality of, addition of individual stocks, I also have the seasonality of the market in general. For example, the QQQs, the SPY. So I want to make sure that I'm going with the market. And um, by doing so, I can, I, can, I can kind of put the odds in my favor for each trade. And by doing so, I relieve myself of some of the risk involved in short-term trades or even in, in monthly trades. So some trades I make purely based on the seasonality. I know, for example, uh, this is, that June is going to be a great month for Facebook based on this very small sample size. I'd rather do it for a stock that's been around for a long time. But based on this small sample size, June is a pretty good month. And uh, the average, there has been zero 
absolutely zero Junes for Facebook where the stock ended um, in the negative. So I might just at the beginning of June buy Facebook, hold it for the month, and then sell it at the end of June, and that would be my seasonal play. So in my uh, copy of the trades program, I send out, I'll update you if that's the trade we're making. So if you subscribe, you might get that trade on a day, on a certain day. I'll say, hey, check it out, guys. Um, Facebook is always up this month. We're going to buy Facebook, and here's the option strategy. Now, for the option strategy, we want to be careful about all those option things that I talk about in all my other videos. So please review my options videos carefully. Um, one thing I always check before I make an options trade, and 99% of options traders do not check this, which is a pity because this is key to understanding what options strategy is going to be the best for a certain trade. You got to check. You got to check volatility. If you don't know the volatility of the stock, you're going to be buying or selling options at a price that's either too high or, or too low. So I always check the volatility and the direction of the volatility of the stock and base the options trade on that because volatility is very important when you're playing with options. So those are the main types of trades I make. Then of course we have other which could be penny stocks. I have a penny stock breakout system that I use to trade penny stocks with practically no risk. Fundamental trades, I might run some of my other codes on a certain stock to see maybe um, if it's overvalued or undervalued, and then do the same kind of seasonal trade based on that. And then gap game plan, of course, if I happen to see a gap in a stock uh, that has already occurred, and then I see that we can make a gap game plan trade where the gap is going to close or breakaway gap is going to take us in a certain direction. I believe actually Netflix has one of those right now. Um, yeah, so we have this gap right here that we could probably make a gap game plan trade on. Uh, we, we might have missed the, the downward opportunity there. Um, it might be headed back up. It's probably oversold at the moment, I would guess. Um, and we got the MACDs crossing. This, this might be actually a good uh, bull play, but I haven't looked at it in depth. But what I'm saying is, if uh, you want to know how I trade, well, I just gave you your answer. I have very short-term trades. I think the max... It's usually like a month or so. The min is a day within the day or between two days. And I have these main types of trades. And then just if I see these opportunities, I'll take them. So I'd say I have four main trading types. Algorithms, day trades, earning trades, seasonality trades. And I put all these trades in my copy my trades program. So if you want to know what I'm trading, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put out the simplest. Not simplest in terms of type, but simplest in terms of options. Because I've had problems before where uh, people have subscribed to my program and they said, hey, your options trades are too complex or uh, my broker won't let me sell that type of option strategy. So these days I've kind of looked at what I'm trading today. So I might be trading two things. I'll just choose the simpler of the option strategy, send it out to my subscribers. But some days I might just be trading one thing and it might be a complicated option strategy. And if it is, I'll explain it to you. And I really do encourage you to get your maximum options level open in your brokerage so you can play along with me because those most, uh, the more complicated strategies are actually the safer ones. You can have unlimited upside and limited downside with certain options strategies. And I'll show you how to do those. I'll explain them in this uh, program. So if you're interested in signing up, please go ahead. Just go to DamonVero.com, subscribe. You can pay by check if you want. Um, some people have asked me, um, when I subscribe, how do I cancel? Well, you just go into PayPal and cancel because once you sign up, it's going to be a recurring payment. I'm assuming that you can stay on for more than a month. Of course, if you're not, you can you can cancel at any time. Um, no skin off my nose. I don't care. So it's up to you. 100 bucks a month. Either way, uh, you'll get to see what I trade. I'll send the option strategy and the reason we're trading it and the trading type will, will be pretty obvious because I'll explain it. And uh, if you're into day trading or swing trading, well, this is for you. So um, without further ado, I'm going to end this video now. I think I've explained pretty well my trading system. And if you're interested, just go to DamonVero.com and sign up.